in North American section of the World Jewish Congress is actively involved in the process of fighting the delegitimization of Israel on a global basis. Now, as I do have only 10 minutes, and I am very disciplined, Eduardo, I am not going to go through all the details of what we do in the United States and Canada. I will just give you a few examples. First of all, we believe that the attitudes of the governments of these two countries do affect very much what's happening on the field. In Canada now, we have a most supportive government of the State of Israel and of the Jewish community. In the United States, as you recall, uh, three months ago, we had a meeting in Brussels where uh, the President Ronald Lauder explained very clearly the reasons that brought him to write that very strong letter to President Obama. In the meantime, at the beginning of the month of July, as you saw on television and in the press, uh, Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu visited Washington and it was a true love fest. Uh, extremely welcomed, and we received reassurances from both sides, from the Israeli sides and from the American sides, that the relations between the Israeli side and the United States were very much back on track. Well, let's see what happens in the next two weeks with the visit of the Prime Minister who is going today to Washington. How do we fight delegitimization? On many levels. First of all, on campuses. I don't know if you are aware of the fact that we have more Jewish students in the United States, in universities, than in any other part of the world, including Israel. We have almost a million Jewish students in the universities and 100,000 Jewish professors. And those professors very often are the core of our problems. Now, there has been a lot of media coverage of what happened at the University of California at Berkeley and at Brandeis University, but uh, who Brandeis that is supposed to be a Jewish university. But what was not covered by the media is the fact that the resolution on divestment from Israel at Berkeley was devastated with a very large vote by the students against it. And after what happened in Brandeis, 51 presidents of universities, presidents of the student bodies in 51 universities in 30 states of the United States invited Ambassador Oren to come and address their campuses. We have had great problems this last few months with the Presbyterian Church, which had never happened before. They prepared a document for their conference that was called Breaking Down the Walls, a document that uh, condemns Israel for being an apartheid state, war crimes, etc., etc., etc. Through a co coalition of rabbinical organizations and individuals, we established a strong dialogue with the Presbyterian Church, and we managed to take all that very negative wording out of their final document. It does not mean that it will remain out forever, but at least at the moment we did establish this very important dialogue. Of course, you are very well aware that the, the Christian, the Christian right-wing church is very supportive of the Jewish community and of Israel when it comes to the, 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 the demonization issues. In reference to um, divestment, divestment is a very, very important issue for us. First of all, because many states, individual states of the Union, have invested heavily with Israel bonds. They have invested their pension funds on Israel bonds. So when there are amendments presented to, uh, locally, that can affect very much those investments in Israel bonds. Until now, we have managed to defeat all those, uh, all those uh, amendments. 
merchandise, Israeli merchandise that is sold heavily in the United States and Canada. And here Canada has developed a very important program. When there are attempts to boycott um, Israeli products, they have developed an, a campaign called Boycott, and immediately large numbers of the community and also outside of the community go and purchase those Israeli items, like Israeli wine, for instance, in very, very large quantities. We have also managed to go to meetings of, very, of large and important corporations that do business with Israel, and that are being attacked for it. For instance, like Caterpillar in the United States, the Mountain Equipment Company in Canada. We have gone to the meetings and managed to bring people that bought just one share, but had the right to vote. And we did manage to, to, to defeat very important and very, very negative divestment resolutions in those companies also. So as you can see, we work in every field. But in New York, specifically because of where we are situated, we work very, very actively within the framework of the United Nations. Now, as you know, the General Assembly is going to start in the next few weeks. If you would have come with me on one of the, of the short trips of that beautiful building on First Avenue the, into any of the six committees of the General Assembly that, that comes out every year with the 20 very negative anti-Israel resolutions, you would have thought that what's happening in that building has nothing to do with what's happening here on the field. There was no reality to it, but not this year. This General Assembly is going to discuss issues that are existential to the interests of the State of Israel. And I'm going to give it to you very quickly the 10 very important subjects that are coming up now. First of all, of course, Iran, and putting more muscle into the resolutions of sanctions. Second, the Middle East Peace Review, under the auspices of the Quartet, and that will depend very much on what's happening next week in Washington. Third, the Goldstone Report, number one, Goldstone one and Goldstone two, coming from the Human Rights Council in Geneva. Four, the flotillas, and not only the Turkish flotilla, but also all the other flotillas that people that, that are now trying to, 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 to start sailing, and that must be stopped. Five, Unifil, and the enormous amount of arms that are coming from Syria into Lebanon. Six, UNRWA, with the allocations for terrorist organizations. Seven, Ahmadinejad, and hopefully a boycott while he, of, of, of his speech the non-proliferation um, treaty that Egypt wants very much should include Israel, etc., etc. As you can see, there are 10 very important existential issues that you must bring individually to your own ministries of foreign affairs because we cannot do the lobbying alone in New York. We need your support, your input. We must know where your government stands on your issue in order to make our work and the work of the President's Conference of Major American Jewish Organizations, with whom we are doing a very, very coordinated lobbying campaign, but we must have your help locally also. Now, yesterday, when I spoke with uh, one of the delegates, uh, about the importance of what's happening in this General Assembly, uh, he said to me, well, don't you think that it's a bit of a waste of our time to put so much effort on the United Nations when the agenda of the World Jewish Congress is truly, at this moment, has so many other emergency situations? And to that, my long answer was, of course, 
No, it is not a waste of effort, because for 2,000 years, we have had a long history, but without geography. But 63 years ago, when the United Nations helped us to establish our own Jewish state, we are not going to allow them now to delegitimize it. But the short answer goes back to Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde was asked, what is your opinion of second marriages? And he answered, oh, it is the victory of hope over experience. And we, the Jews, we have a lot of hope. Hatikva is our national anthem. Shana Tova, and thank you very much. <laughs>